configuration. Uh, actually, this is a detailed description of OT and frame. Uh, this frame uh, composed of four columns and uh, 4,080 rows of Markov multiplexing. And actually, uh, this is uh, forward error correction, so called RS255239. It's a read Solomon type forward error correction employed. So, due to this forward error correction, the bit rate about 7% increase over client signal, or basically 2.5 or 10G or 40G. And uh, inter-domain interface, uh, both ends of inter-domain interface is equipped with, equipped with three R regenerating, reshaping, and timing regenerating methods. And acti actually, uh, this uh, overhead, what contains this overhead is a frame alignment and something like OT overhead, uh, connectivity check or error rate uh, monitoring or a a alarm indication signal or data communication channel like that. So many functions in OT and overhead. Okay. And then uh, this is the so-called OT and multiplexing hierarchy. Uh, originally, uh, OTN was uh, focused on uh, containing only SDH signals, so uh, OTN, uh, ODU uh, container size was uh, uh, for 2.5, 4G or 10G or so-called SDH signal, only for SDH signal. But recently, we have so-called Ethernet, 10G Ethernet, or even a 40G Ethernet, maybe in future, 100G Ethernet. So the problem is that that's uh, Ethernet, 10G Ethernet, but the actually different speed, slightly different speed from the SDH 10G signals. So uh, OT and have so complex hierarchy back here. And this is actually the number of client, uh, kind of client, 100G ESA will, will be put in ODU4, 40G after transcoding, so ODU3 container, 10G, uh, actually ODU2, E means extension size of a box, ODU2, I can't find it here. <laughs> Or fiber channel, gigabit ESA should be to ODU0, ODU0, and such. Whole 10G ESA should be uh, ODU3, ODU3, OTU3E. E means extension. So the size is slightly larger than the normal ODU size. Normal ODU is created for accommodation of SDH signal. So as I said, Ethernet is slightly bigger than, uh, slightly larger than SDH. So we will need such a, another type, type of interface, so E extension, okay? So very complicated. <laughs> so as a reference, I add uh, and currently discussed uh, Ethernet interface. This is, of course, out of ITUT recommendations, uh, but IEEE that you will need an uh, interface, Ethernet interface, right? And currently, uh, uh, it will be discussing a 40G and 100G high-speed Ethernet interface. And uh, the distance, target distance is one meter to 40 kilometer because it will be discusses only LAN interface, not for long distance transmission. So uh, they are discussing the 40, they have already 10G Ethernet specification, and the next they will have 40G ESA and 100G ESA. So uh, for 40G Ethernet, uh, such kind, such interface, as you can see, uh, all of the interface use WDM signal, like that, 10, 10G or 4. 25G or 410G. This is because a uh, uh, single channel interface of 40G or 100G is still so expensive. So their choice is to use WDM technology for further reduction of cost. So now they have a 
uh, four parallel WDM interface. So, uh, N30, okay. <laughs> so I will continue a bit, and uh, I will describe, describe progress in optical transmission technology briefly for uh, further discussion. Uh, optical transmission technology uh, developed uh, mainly uh, uh, about 80, 90, 80 or so, 30 years ago or so. So uh, at the emergence of optical fiber transmission, they used low-loss fiber, but it 1.3 micrometer region and single modality. Then they have a so-called gigabit class signal transmission. That's used high-speed IC and signal band was 1.55 micrometer meter devices, and also have a so-called dispersion-shifted fiber, dispersion-shifted fibers for use of high-speed transmission scene. And also, uh, at this moment, the coherent optical transmission technology developed. They require narrow spectral line with this and high st stable laser, but once this coherent technology was uh, not studied so hard uh, until the recent, recently, uh, 2005 or six. And now we had uh, so-called optical amplifier and optically amplified transmission technology that includes so-called erbium dot fiber I described on Friday, the high power laser diode, but we faced a problem of fiber nonlinearity and dispersion management. Then we had a so-called higher speed, further higher speed transmission at 10G. And also had a wavelength division multiplexing technology. Uh, and so I described the AWG-based optical max, DMAX development, uh, advanced fiber dispersion management, new type of fiber, wide gain equalization EDFA. So with those High speed technology in TDM and WDM technology achieved so huge number of wavelength transmission and uh, large capacity signal transmission, actually. So uh, nearly 2000, we had a Rama amplification technologies for further improve, improvement of uh, transmission performance. And uh, after 2000, we have developed ultra high speed transmission that's 40G signal channel technology, and also advanced modulation format, uh, like so-called DPSK or DQPSK. And recently, uh, for the ultra high-speed transmission, 100 G per channel WDM transmission, uh, this is not so popular in commercial use, but uh, anyway, in laboratories, uh, so intensive research uh, have been made. So the key technology is the digital coherent modulation, demodulation. So this coherent uh, technology revived here, okay? And uh, maybe uh, OFDM technology will be uh, one of the those kind of technology, okay? And uh, this is the history of uh, capacity distance increase in optical transmission systems. So uh, we can see uh, those points are on the line here. Uh, capacity distance uh, product means uh, maybe uh, difficulty in technology. You can understand how difficult to increase bit rate and to increase distance. So uh, this means uh, difficulty in technology. And uh, maybe uh, at the time uh, before 80, 1980, uh, we had a so-called megabit level speed. And after 90, uh, we had the so-called terabit uh, region that's achieved by uh, EDFA, WDM, or something like that. And recently, uh, we had the so huge petabit, uh, petabit per kilometer areas for Raman or wideband WDM technology. And this is the uh, development of an, uh, undersea capacity transmission, uh, that means submarine systems. Uh, as you can see, they are largely dominated by Atlantic Bay in USA and uh, Europe, the largest one. And uh, Europe, Africa, 
uh, Asia systems uh, less than 1.5, so all, all other systems, so uh, we can see still Africa have not so large capacity connecting to the world, right? So in other words, you will have so many chances to increase the capacity and to have so many businesses, right? <laughs> Sorry? Anyway, uh, uh, currently uh, Africa has not so many uh, international routes, and this will grow up in the future, of course. Sorry, uh, microphone? Uh, those, those that does are for 2006 or 2010? I see 2006 there. So uh, the information is for which year? For 2006 or 2010? 2006. Six. Yeah. Because now we have the submarine cable, yeah. the easy project, and there is traffic going to Amsterdam, going to Europe and the America. So I'm sorry, I had only this figure, 2006. So now, uh, 2010, after four years, we, you will have so many uh, submarine cable systems and capacity, but I didn't have any good figures or materials to explain you. But uh, I don't need to explain you about African communication network, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, yes, we'll continue a, a bit more. This is a very, very basic uh, image of um, optical transmission technology, so uh, I think I don't need to explain so much. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, just briefly reviewed how, what is the TDM and the WDM. TDM signal march back the one zero one zero bit, and it depends on the speed of this bit rate 10G or 40G. So increased TTM signal means that uh, you change the lane to a, from slow speed away to a high speed away. That is just TDM uh, technology. And WDM is increase the number of lane, just same speed, but increase the number of lane, uh, you, you know. <laughs> Very simple. And TDM is also uh, multiplexing uh, low speed data, many range data, to a one high speed data range. This is a TDM. And also WDM technology increases the boundaries. Uh, to increase the WDM capacity, we will have two options. One is increase the bandwidth uh, available optical passband. And one is to have dense WDM, so uh, decrease the wavelength spacing. So as a result of those technology, we will have so large transmission capacity, uh, number of channel, cross bit rate. So two technology, reducing channel spacing or increase available optical path bandwidth. So this video shows just uh, cost in TDM, WDM systems. Hmm. We will have a transmitter rest receiver cost in this TDM part. This is maybe electrical, OEE or EO conversion. And uh, this part, WDM transmission line, includes transmission line, repeater, actually optical amplifier. So uh, total cost is determined by this uh, TDM part and WDM part. So your choice is uh, depending on the cost of those TDM parts and the WDM parts. Actually, uh, if you have 40G capacity, you will have a choice, one single channel 40G signal, or four 10G WDM signal. It depends on which is the best choice. It depends on the uh, transmission distance and the cost. Actually, uh, uh, maybe uh, three, four, uh, five years ago, 40G transmitter uh, transponder was very expensive. So most people choiced uh, uh, 10, 4G WDM 
exist. But recently, 4TG transponds are, the, are really a reasonable cost. So uh, you may have a choice 4TG single channel instead of 10G, uh, 10, uh, 4TG WTM. And same situation is that 100G system. There could be also a single channel 100G transponder, but actually very expensive. So you will have 10 10G WDM system. 10 10G transponder will be cost effective than one 100G uh, transponder. So in such a situation, you will choose a 10 10G uh, WDM system. So the, I would emphasize you have to uh, determine the, which type of technology is best. Uh, it depends on TDM and the WDM cost. Okay. So uh, let's have a coffee break now. Okay. How many is better? <laughs> How long? Normally, I don't know. 30 minutes. So let's resume chapter six again. So here, uh, I will describe about uh, optical signal generation or modulation or demodulation schemes. Uh, this is recently very important technology in uh, optical transmission system technologies as increasing bit rate uh, for TG or 100G. So uh, I'm not sure you are interested in so much in such a uh, optical modulation, demodulation techniques, but anyway, uh, I think it, this is a very important technology in optical communication systems. And in principle, this modulation, demodulation schemes are actually used not only in optical systems, but also wireless or some kind of other technology. So it will be beneficial for you to know that uh, such kind of modulation, demodulation technique. So first of all, uh, I'll show you the a basic configuration of a transmitter. The transmitter consists of so-called electrical domain and optical domain. So so first. I describe the baseband signal generation. So baseband signal is an electrical digital path sequence of data, including forward error correction, like an OTN signal. So the electric, electrical coding is used, uh, for example, DPSK, or optical dual binary. I will explain you later that requires differential coding or dual binary coding. Some coding is going to be entered anyway. So the electric pulse shaping will be will be changed by some this electric pulse shaping if necessary. This means that uh, signal pulse shape could be changed for uh, another one. For example, non-return to zero format to return to zero format, like that. And uh, and the electrical to optical conversion means that, as you know, so-called EO conversion, just a mod uh, laser plus modulator, right? And the electrical signal wave homes are converted to optical amplitude or phase or frequency, depending on the uh, modulation format. Uh, this optical coding is a very special one. It's uh, necessary for only optical code division multiple acts. CDMA will be uh, so popular word in uh, wireless network, CDMA, something like that. But it's not so popular in the optical system. And the optical signals after EO conversion are then multiplexed to create a double DM signal using uh, optical uh, multiplexer. As I described in chapter five, AWG multiplexer or something like that. And in some cases, you will uh, use uh, so-called polarization division multiplex. This uh, could multiplex uh, different uh, polarization state uh, signals, uh, basically two signals to one uh, sig signal in a fiber. So this could be called PDM, polarization domain multiplex. 
And this figure shows uh, uh, demodulation or optical detection. That means the receiver. So this is this time this direction signal will flow. So the DWDM signal is once demultiplexed to each signal channel by an optical demultiplexer. And the, if we use PDM signal, which can be uh, demultiplexed here, so to different kinds of polarization signals. So uh, after uh, e OE conversion, so optical to electric conversion, uh, we will use electrical filtering. And if uh, electrical, uh, <coughs> uh, some uh, electrical filtering and demodulation or decoding. Decoding means that correspond to the DPSK, differential PSK system or something like that. So when we use DPSK, we will place a decoder here. And uh, electrical demodulation will be uh, necessary if uh, we use uh, such OFDM, optical frequency division multiplexing, but uh, it's not so important now. As I said, uh, we will have uh, different type of uh, signal format, and uh, that is uh, described the duty ratio of wave, uh, duty ratio of pulse, and wave home intensity modulation. So normally we will use NRG, non return to zero format. That means uh, one one uh, successive one train uh, in the one train, uh, the signal level will not go down to zero, just one. And the return to zero means that each time one once return to zero level, so one one but one zero. And we also uh, have a partial return to zero, which partially return to zero, but it depends on the patterns. So duty ratio is a uh, ratio of the uh, time bit and the pulse width. This is the 100% is NRG, and the 50% we call RG. Uh, this is just the idea of increased bits per symbol or time slot. Uh, most basic one is so-called binary on-off signal, or 1010 pulse. So uh, in such a case, we convey one bit, only one bit per symbol or signal pulse. But we also have an idea that n multiple state signal. So that compares with one symbol, we can convey n bits simultaneously. So symbol rate can be reduced by n. And uh, robust against so uh, wave home distortion was something like that because symbol rate could be lower than the original bit rate, but uh, degradation in SNL will be increased and the complexity increases. This idea is just uh, if we use binary on of on of on of, this symbol convey only one binary uh, binary information, but if we use uh, coding. For example, one zero is for one symbol, zero zero one symbol, one 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 symbol, like that. So two bits are assigned only one symbol. In this case, this one symbol conveys two bits. As well as this technique, you can have a four level, eight level, or sixteen level. So if we have such a march level intensity modulation, we have to have a so march level uh, intensity modulation. March level means not only zero or one level, but uh, mutual position of such level. So we have to detect uh, uh, this, uh, identify this level, one, two, three, four level. Normally a binary IM or binary digital signal, we uh, only have to detect the one or zero, but in this case, 0 0.330 or 0 0.667 or one, or a very complicated modulation format. And uh, another difficulty is uh, if we describe this uh, modulation format in a phase up frame, this real part means that it's power. Zero, one, 0 0.66, 0 0.37, as I described, uh, this distance is very close 
That means the uh, weak for noise or corruption. That's very close between the symbols. So another idea is to use optical phase. So optical phase modulation. So optical phase modulation it, it changes phase of optical uh, signal, like a zero, 180, 270, 190 degree. So we place symbol. Uh, position to here. So this is also four level modulation, and this is also four level modulation, but as you can see clearly, this distance between the symbol is very large, so uh, very robust against noise or waveform distortion. So larger inter-symbol inter distance and SNL improvement can be expected by using such kind of phase modulation technology. So uh, various optical modulation, demodulation schemes are now used and uh, considered. Well, most simple ones, as I said, on, off key, binary signal. But this is very simple and cost effective. And it's enough for maybe 10G systems or lower bit rates. So we used, have used so often on off key 10G system ever. But uh, as increasing a bit rate to 40G or 100G, uh, we have to use a more sophisticated so called advanced modulation format. And recently, uh, DPSK or DPQPSK are used uh, mainly in 40G system. DPSK means uh, phase shift keying, phase modulation, but uh, in digital system we say P phase shift keying, not phase modulation. Phase modulation used uh, for analog system, but uh, just on off, so phase shift keying. Phase shift keying. DPSK used this uh, zero degree and uh, uh, 180 degree symbol. DQPSK means Q means a quad PSK, so four point. You can choose here, 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 and here, but this is the choice. So bit per symbol rate will increase by two, two bits. And you, you also have a dual polarization QPSK. As I described, uh, you can multiplex in polarization division of optical signal. And this time, in this technique, uh, two DQPSK signal are multiplex in uh, one signal. So uh, you have a four bit passing. You also have such a 16 quadrature amplitude modulation that you uh, use amplitude, both amplitude and phase in this field. Uh, field. And uh, you can have a four bit passing. But this is not so common yet in optical communication systems. Uh, however, in uh, wireless systems, 14 QAM or 64 QAM, so very, very complicated modulation format are used to increase the capacity of wireless system. So, so this is uh, described uh, in G dot supplement 39 have used uh, red supplement, G dot supplement 39 or 43 or something. Uh, AQT have uh, not only recommendations, but also have supplement uh, techniques. So supplement techniques have described uh, so many details of technology which are not included in the recommendations. So uh, this figure is taken from the uh, supplement 39. So uh, this uh, supplement 39 describes uh, comprehensively uh, those a modulation format, as I described, NRZ, non return zero, or zero and one. Spectrum, I diagram, TX, TX configuration, RX configuration, very, very simple. And also RZ 50%, just the difference in uh, duty ratio. The symbol one zero is different, same. But the spectrum is wide because of the narrower signal path, half, almost half the NRZ. So we will need something a bit complicated modulation style. Optical dual binary means that uh, <coughs> this use uh, this three point for binary binary signal transmission. 
the merit of this optical radio binary is so narrow spectral width. So it's very effective for WDM transmission or kinds of that. But eye opening is not so good, so uh, very weak for noise. Uh, and complicate, a bit complicated uh, configuration in transmitter. RZ AMI is uh, just uh, RZ pulse, but uh, the phase of optical signal will be uh, alternative, alternatively modulated, so AMI, alternately modulated. And then uh, NRZ DPSK, RZ DPSK, or NRZ, so many kinds of combination of modulation formats are considered now. So you don't need to remember each of them, but uh, uh, you should remember so there are so many kinds of optical modulation in your equipment. Okay, so NRZ DPSK, the uh, DPSK plus NRZ, so combination of both NRZ and the DPSK, or RZ plus DPSK, or NRZ plus DPSK. So details of the waveform or spectrum or oh, receiver transmitter configurations are described in this G. Supplement 39. So, someone who are interested in such kind of advanced modulation formats, I'll look at the G. Supplement 39. And this is, uh, as I described, uh, DPQPSK means the dual polarization QPSK. That means uh, so called two polarization states. Are multiplexed in a one signal channel. So basically, uh, this DPQPSK is the same as QPSK. But uh, configuration, transmitter configuration is very complicated because the two, basically, two transmitters are used and uh, combined as polarization, two different polarization states. And then we have to divide it in the polarization domain for two signals. So complicated technique. And you, as you know, uh, the polarization state of the signal in a fiber will frequently change, like a PMD, or anyway, very, very frequently change. So we have to follow the change of the polarization state to split in the two signals multiplexed in a polarization domain. So we will use uh, such a coherent detection schemes. This is called the digital coherent scheme. Digital coherence means the digital signal processing them down in this electrical area. Otherwise, we have to track the uh, trace of polarization state and something manually <laughs> or uh, something optically. It's very difficult and complex. So we use such a, a digital signal processing <coughs> technology. Uh, this is used actually uh, 100G transmission system. So this is uh, just uh, details of uh, digital coherent detection, and uh, <coughs> I don't describe so detail, but uh, anyway, we will need a signal and a local two lasers, yeah? And two la lasers are split into two polarization states and mixed here, each polarization state, and uh, detected here, and also this is QPSK signal. So we have to detect the uh, two states of optical phase, I channel, Q channel, I channel. As you can see, very, very complex uh, configuration. And this is a 90 degree hybrid uh, used here. This is the principle of a 90 degree hybrid. Uh, anyway, uh, I will stop to explain this configuration. But uh, then, uh, as I showed uh, in chapter five, uh, this is the same figure. So I don't describe detail in uh, this video, but anyway, uh, the introduction to the next phase of uh, optical communication networks. So Rodom, as you see, Rodom plus PX. Uh, why we use PX, as I described in chapter five, that uh, if uh, currently we use a WDM system plus, like an IP router, so many IP packets coming to IP router. So if the capacity is so large and high speed, so 
So router has to manipulate so many packets so frequently. It's very, very tough. Yeah? So uh, it makes a large latency. So he will take so time, much time to process packets and delay jitta. So difficult to achieve higher throughput. It's very difficult and problematic uh, recently for a large capacity and transport network. So the idea of use for so using photonic cross connect is to use uh, to place here like a highway junction, yeah, flexible highway junction. So if we have a so highway junction and uh, change the signal route by optically by photonic switching, IP router uh, don't need to work so hard, right? In this configuration, IP router do everything. But if we press photonic cross connect and make this highway flexible, the changing highway, you can connect this highway to here or here too. So IP router uh, ties could be uh, reduced. So this is uh, actually uh, one idea of evolution in optical networks. Uh, actually, uh, I don't know about the situation of African country, but this we have actually, for example, in Japan. So uh, present, or uh, we had uh, so long haul trunk network plus branch network. This is mean the whole access network, and. Uh, in the past, we had a so-called uh, ADM ring. ADM ring means not optical switching, but uh, just electrical switching, like SDH cross-connect. So access network uh, capacity can be uh, accommodated here, aggregated. And then for larger trunk area, we use larger ADM, like a 10G or kinds of. And finally, 10G capacity can be multiplexed to DWDM system for uh, to transmit large capacity of signal. For example, Tokyo to Kyoto, Osaka in Japan. Uh, and uh, in future, those rings could be uh, so optical photonic switching network. So very large capacity of uh, accommodation can be possible in the RODOM system. And uh, even uh, PXC plus DWM system can be flexibly changed network configuration. OK. Uh, this is the end of uh, my tutorial of basic optical communication system. So is there, do you have any questions? Oh, so let's start the uh, contents of uh, ITUT Handbook, Chapter 6, again. And uh, Chapter 6 describes the uh, ITUT criteria for specification. So uh, ITUT optical interface recommendations are achieved interworking among equipment from different manufacturers. So we need classification objectives each type of system main parameters used for the specification. So I will describe again this item, transversely compatible interfaces and longitudinally compatible interfaces. But uh, I briefly uh, describe here optical interworking is achieved. So uh, that means the uh, uh, interworking between the different vendors or different countries. So we need a transversely compatible interface. So this interface contains an ambiguous, so clear and appropriate set of parameters and associated set of values is defined. So longitudinal compatibility means uh, optical interworking is not achieved or necessary. Optical technology isn't sufficiently mature or when design rules are significantly complex, so you can't have a so interworking. Mm -hmm. In such a case, uh, specification uh, impossible to generate a specification of transversely compatible interface with a reasonable amount of effort. So we say, uh, in such a case, we have a longitudinal compatibility. 
So then the classification of the optical systems. So various qualities uh, in the optical systems, operating wavelengths, number of signal channels, type of WDM, bit rate, and client classes, and that's all. So first, uh, uh, I would like to describe operating wavelengths. <coughs> The choice of operating wavelength range depends on the fiber type or G.652. Sorry? Yeah, actually, this word is a very complicated word. And actually, I uh, exactly followed the ITT handbook description. But the meaning is uh, a bit, uh, I also feel a bit strange on this description. And actually, uh, not possible is a bit strange wording, but I, de I describe here. Uh, actually, uh, we have a specification, but not possible means not transversely compatible interface specifications are not one. So uh, we can use, uh, you can have uh, some specification for long seasonal compatibility. Uh, but I will describe this issues later uh, in chapter six framework. So uh, I will briefly uh, skip this idea now. Thank you. So uh, this is the operating wavelength. And uh, as I said, the uh, choice of wavelength range depends on the fiber type, uh, attenuation range, and dispersion. That means uh, Z.652, 653, or 655, like that. And the optical source characteristics mean the characteristics of uh, lasers. Uh, the laser generates 1.3 micrometers wavelength, right? Or 1.55 micrometers, right? It depends on the uh, characteristics of optical sources. And also optical amplifier characteristics means that uh, normally EDFA has a uh, gain bandwidth around C bandwidth. But sometimes we can have a so-called L-band amplifier. L-band amplifier is just that uh, just shifts gain bandwidth to the L-band region. So we, you can uh, you also can have a, a kind of S-band amplifier, but very, very special S-band amplifier. And uh, also you have uh, such a 1,300 meter area traseogeum doped fiber amplifier, but uh, not so commonly used. Or even you have a RAM amplifier, and as I described in chapter five, RAM amplifier can change the gain bandwidth if you change the wavelength of a pump wavelength, yeah? You, here, you input pump power here, you will have a gain bandwidth here, but you will input pump power here, you will have gain bandwidth here, like that. Then uh, this operating wavelength range is categorized so as uh, OESCLU. So home in the original band is uh, about 1,300, 1,300 nanometers region. And E-band is also called extended here from 1,360 to uh, 1,460 or so. And as I described, the next longer wavelength region is uh, a bit strange, but short wavelengths means. Uh, to 1,530 uh, nanometers. And this is a C band, a very easy naming, conventional, yeah? C band, but uh, mostly used band, uh, optical band, uh, because as I said, the EDFA has gain around this region, so conventional C band. And we also have a L band. L band means a long wavelength band around here, and U band means a ultra long wavelength band here. Okay. And 
And the band for non-transmission purpose means that uh, in some applications, uh, uh, we don't need uh, any uh, a band for transmission, but su such an unused band is useful for uh, uh, maintenance functions, like a prevent after installation or before service and post forward on fiber cables in the outside plant. I mean, uh, su uh, surveillance or testing or control activities of the time domain reflectometry te testing, or fiber identification, loss testing, and power monitoring. Actually, uh, OTDL right uh, sometimes used outside the transmission band, uh, so not to uh, interfere the signal band. So if you use uh, like in-service monitoring of a fiber cable, you can't use the uh, signal transmission band for OTDL measurement. In such case, uh, OTDL could be used outside the signal transmission band, for example, U-band or longer band with wavelengths. And the requirement is not so strict. Uh, not so uh, lower fiber loss is not ensured in this band just for measurement or monitoring. You don't need to transmit so high bit rate signal of 40G or 10G, just low speed or even continuous wave laser for monitoring of cable. Actually, OTDR has such a low speed parasites. Uh, then, uh, Optical system interface categories, uh, the, we will say a single channel interface and multi-channel interface. This is a very simple idea, single transmission system or multi-channel system, WDM system. So interface point is at the out of the TX uh, transmitter or in front of the receiver or in front uh, at the out of the multiplexer. This is actually WDM signal and in front of the multiplex. This is a uh, reference point in a single, uh, single channel system or a multi-channel system. So channel spacing in WDM systems is, uh, as I described in the uh, optical transmission basics, uh, the capacity of a WDM system is determined by the wavelength band with and the number of channels. So the maximum number of channels in a WDM system, uh, uh, even in a spectral band, is determined by the channel spacing. So channel spacing is narrower. Spacing could be useful for uh, increasing capacity. So cha the channel spacing is defined to be the nominal difference in frequency or wavelength between two ad adjacent optical channels. So you must be careful that actually exact description of optical signal channel is frequency, not wavelengths. We use wavelengths because we are very familiar in kinds of optics, so uh, 1.55 micrometer or 1.3 micrometer, but actually uh, uh, ITUT grid has to be uh, described by frequency, yeah? because the uh, wavelength depends on the band if you say uh, wavelength spacing is, uh, for example, one nanometer, but one nanometer is, uh, will be changed depending on the location of the band. But frequency doesn't change. So the minimum channel spacing is limited by interchannel cross talk. That means that uh, depends on the channel bit. And bit rate, as increases channel bit rate, the spectra will broadening, broadening, and uh, it will make uh, some cross talk to a uh, neighbor channels. So uh, it will be limited by the channel bit rate or modulation format. Modulation format also, uh, depending on the modulation format, the spectra broaden. Uh, for example, you use NLZ or RZ or something like that, as you see. The spectral width will depend on the modulation format, even the bit rate the same. And also, field type has bandwidth. It, of course, uh, WDM system has to demax the WDM signal into one signal channel. So, field type has bandwidth characteristics will impact on channel spacing. 
or central wavelength variations, uh, like uh, laser manufacturing and laser temperature variations means uh, if the light source wavelengths are shifted, uh, there will be a degradation of the optical signal. So uh, we will need uh, some specification of central wavelength variations. And also we have uh, fiber nonlinearity in this cross talk. I don't step in the fiber nonlinearity issue now uh, because uh, I will describe it tomorrow in the framework of chap uh, chapter seven. Okay. So this figure is a categories of WDM system. Actually, uh, channel spacing is described in GL 694.1, and this is uh, actually uh, some multiples of 12.5 GHz. So we categorize WDM systems, uh, dense or coarse or wide WDM. I mainly use this word DWDM or sometimes CWDM. I don't see uh, such WWDM. Have you seen <laughs> such a name? <laughs> no? Hmm. Okay. Actually, yeah, you will often hear the name DWDM system. Okay. And sometimes CWDM system. What the difference is just to uh, channel spacing, DWDM uh, dense, so we will have uh, such a 0 0.18 nanometer spacing, 1.6 nanometers. Instead, CWDM has uh, maybe 10 nanometers of a wider channel spacing for lower cost. And then the number of channels in CWDM system. So, CWDM grid with channel space at 20 nanometers was so uh, used for 2.5G signal transmission. So channel spacing of 20 nanometers determines the following reason or laser stability or optical filtering tolerance or uh, something other technological reason for lower cost. Uh, that means uh, 20 nanometer spacing is uh, almost uh, 18 wavelengths was so described in G6.95. So you will have a CWDMC system only for, uh, you need a very, very low cost, but not so large capacity, you, unnecessary. Uh, maybe, for example, in a rural area or uh, not so a big city area. And then, uh, this, shows the uh, bit rate and the client classes. So optical tributary classes. Tributary is just the um, uh, same as a tributary of river. Tributary, like that. And uh, we will have uh, such a configuration of uh, electrical multiplexing of signals and transmitters, receivers, uh, demultiplexers. So uh, we have NRZ 1.252, uh, NRZ RZ 40G tributary classes. That means uh, uh, nominal 6 megabit to uh, 1.25 uh, for STM4 or 2.5G means uh, from 60, uh, 100 to uh, 2.67. That means uh, 4, 6, uh, 100 megabit interface or one channel 2.5 uh, interface. Uh, the 10G, 20, 25G, or 40G is uh, all same read that uh, maybe 40G have a 99 or almost a 10G tributary for a four tributary, 10G tributary, or one single channel 40G tributary. That, that is simple tributary class. And this is a really a simple idea. The system is unidirectional or bidirectional. A very easy idea. That unidirectional system contains only a unidirection flow of optical signals. This is the most commonly used idea. But in some cases, uh, we will have a bidirectional system. Bidirectional system has such a uh, this way and also reverse way in a fiber. Normally, uh, we will use uh, reverse direction, whole reverse direction, another fiber, uh, up, down, two fibers. 
But in this case, up and down direction is included in only one fiber. So this is a cost effect, seems to be cost effective. But uh, a bit problematic because uh, optical reflection, cross talk, or something like, uh, there are so many problematic and uh, it's difficult to handle. So uh, I don't know uh, such kind of bidirectional system only, uh, except for only uh, special cases, okay? You only have only one five hours, <laughs> some sh limited situation. And the next criteria is, is the uh, really <laughs> also simple, linear or link. This is just linear, right? And uh, you also, uh, can include the max d max function, but anyway, we say this configuration, linear configuration. And the ring configuration means, means, as you can see, it's just ring style configurations. Uh, mostly, this type of network have OADM, like a rhodom, rhodom or OADM, optical add drop multiplexing to access this network from this uh, tributary side. So fiber type is a very, very simple thing. That you use D.6, 5X, X means 2, 3, 4, 5, or something like that. Just simple criteria. Uh, also, uh, we have a criteria line coding, uh, but uh, actually, if I say modulation format, as I explained uh, before, modulation format. So optical interfaces, I have uh, NRD transmission, uh, just simply zero or one. <laughs> and NRD, NRD, I showed that before. So most uh, interface use this NRD, in particular uh, speed uh, slower than 10G, but we will have RT format for 40G transmission. Uh, benefit of return to zero format is uh, less uh, pattern dependent, but uh, we will need uh, some uh, wider signal modulation boundaries, and there uh, could be something uh, drawbacks uh, compared to the NRT format. So, uh, any questions uh, about the IQT criteria? No? <laughs> Uh, very simple ideas. This is uh, so. Uh, shall we continue? To, uh,